We've got to review the last Uncharted game before we pass the big episode 100. Uncharted Lost Legacy is a thing. Oh, but it's a whole game using the two weakest characters as the main characters. Oh, hey, Tom Holland just played Baby Drake in that recent movie. Completely flubbing the games. Yeah, I know. But isn't Uncharted fun because it is a game? Yeah, that's not at all what you said before. Well, it's clear now. So did you forget to do one of those Uncharted skit things where you reenact the scene from the game this time or what? <laughs> A uh, hamster, my uh, long lost brother needs us to. N needs. needs a. Uh, um. needs a. a, a p -p -p pirates! Whoa, these graphics are amazing! Oh, it all plays so smoothly. And was that a dialogue choice just now? Whoa, we get gameplay innovations too! That's so cool! Hey, look, you can totally choose to drive that Jeep to the left or to the right! There's so much freedom this time, it's incredible! Are you ready for Uncharted for the fourth time? <laughs> but it's all so refined, so polished, it plays like butter! Or so I've heard. I mean, I've not actually played butter myself, but I've heard great things. Yeah, it really plays like a high-end AAA product, refined for years, pushing out a slightly better version of what they've been milking for a decade. Sure, there's a few things that are new, like open-ended environments where you can explore and approach targets how you see fit, but it's all still super linear. Nate has this awesome new grappling tool for swinging across treacherous ravines and making all sorts of death-defying leaps of faith. It feels so good to use, it's hard to imagine Uncharted didn't have it until now. Especially with how badly the universe is out to kill this guy, he needs all the help he can get. Including a magical rope that attaches to anything he points at and unties itself whenever he jumps. Gotta collect all those precariously placed coins, relics, and all that other ancient crap somehow. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't care any less about 100%ing an Uncharted game. Eh, why not? It's like trying to 100% a DVD's bonus features after you've already watched the movie. Jokes aside, this game looks phenomenal, and I still show it off to people to showcase how far video games have come, and this game is six years old! Yeah, seeing flowing hair, reactive snow, and mud effects, and even Nate's open sweaty pores on his skin is cool and all, but what I really love is the meticulous attention to detail. I'm the weirdo who spends an hour rummaging through Nate's home, reading all the book spines and kitchen table notes in his house before moving on with a five minute scene. It's all made so lived in and real it just oozes with personality. All right, it's pretty and all, but you and I both know what you came for, and it was the... All right, so this is the ending to the Uncharted story, so obviously there's gonna be some spoilers in this one. I mean, I'm not sure why you're even here in the first place, six and a half years after the fact, just wanting to go in blind, but whatever. The story begins with Nate, his older brother Sam, and their accomplice Rafe infiltrating a Panamanian prison in search of clues leading them toward the crooked pirate Henry Avery's lost treasure. However, Rafe does a no-no and shoots a prison guard, so the gang's gonna make a run for it, resulting in Sam being shot in the back and left behind, presumed dead, as Nate and Rafe escape. Oopsie. So jump, so jump ahead to present day, where Nate is working a dirty river salvaging job to support his wife Elena, even though he greatly misses his old life of treasure hunting and mass murder. Mostly the treasure part, but you totally do get to play a make-believe shooty-shoot tutorial in Nate's attic with a Nerf gun, so you can't convince me he also doesn't miss the murder. I'm just gonna let this happen. So anywho, after Nate and Elena do normal couple things for a while, like play Crash Bandicoot on PSX, Nate suddenly gets a surprise visitor at work, his long-thought dead brother Sam, who was eager to get back on the trail of Henry Avery's treasure to pay off an old drug lord cellmate of his responsible for springing him from the jail in the first place. Nate is enticed back Back into the business with Sam reigniting the trail of the treasure that Nate lost ages ago in the prison, but because drama, Nate tries to cover up this voyage from his wife Elena, which obviously is going to work perfectly well and not come back to bite him in the butt later. Regardless, the two set off on the trail to find this lost treasure, joining up with Sully to steal an ancient idol from an auction house once they realize it contains the next clue they need. However, they aren't the only ones keen on this detail, as Rafe appears at the auction house, intent on bidding for the idol and hunting down the treasure himself. He's also joined by Nadine, a hired mercenary leader recruited to assist Rafe in buying his way to the treasure. I hate this character. 
She and Nate have an obligatory scripted action scene, but inevitably Nate and company find a map inside the idol leading them to a Scottish cathedral. And from here on, Rafe and Nadine simply play the parts of every other Uncharted villain ever in being hot pursuit on the trail, but just too dumb to find the clue for themselves, and giving you lots of people to shoot along the way. <sighs> so eventually, they find a hidden temple, because of course they do, with yet another ridiculously elaborate booby-trapped hint system Henry Avery used to recruit his pirates, and only tell the ones he trusted the location of his secret hideaway pirate utopia, Libertalia, revealed to be in the jungles of Madagascar. And just before they're about to set off, Elena finds Nate in his hotel and calls him out on his lie. They bicker like a married couple for a while before Nate and Sam head out to discover Libertalia anyway. Obligatory drama! So once they get there, of course they discover remnants of a massive pirate civil war with all the treasure missing. But with some basic detective work, the brothers believe it was moved to a hidden pirate manor at New Devon. However, before they can set off, they're ambushed by Rafe, who reveals that Sam's story about paying off a drug lord was a lie, and it was actually he who freed Sam with the intention of getting his help in finding the treasure, and it was Sam who backstabbed him by going with Nate instead. Dun, dun, dun. Barely Rafe is butthurt that Nate is the one who always ends up you know, uh, being the protagonist of Uncharted games, and finding all of this legendary lost stuff. So he tries to shoot the man over this, and not at all because he murdered half of Nadine's goons. Sam tries to save Nate from the bullet, but Nate ends up tumbling backwards down a rocky ravine anyway. But since he is Nathan Drake, he's saved by the plot, just like when this happened in Uncharted 3. He magically gets reunited with Elena? Yep, even with absolutely no way to track Nate at all. All, Elena somehow appears and saves Nate from dying crumpled at the bottom of a cliff in the middle of a deserted, forgotten, uncharted island just for some extra drama as the couple reenact their ineffective marriage counseling while overlooking some gorgeous exotic vistas. Why do I like this story? Surprise! Flashback to Nate and Sam's early days at an orphanage for a random chapter where we establish the two history dorks' backstory on obtaining their mother's journal with her notes and investigation into Libertalia by stealing it from an enormous museum-like mansion in the middle of the night. Well, they get caught, and the old bag living there calls the police and immediately croaks, flopping over on the ground like a sack of potatoes, resulting in the boys fleeing the scene and changing their names to Drake to avoid the police. As if anybody ever needed that established. Do I even like this story? So after that redundant plot filler, we resume with Nate and Elena discovering that the Pirates of Libertalia fought amongst each other over their pooled treasure, culminating in Henry Avery and Captain Hook, Thomas II, whatever, poisoning all the other founders and making off with their stolen gold. Nate meets up with Sam and chases him to a hidden cavern where they discover a giant abandoned pirate ship loaded with all of the stolen loot. Of course, this is also right when Rafe and Nadine find the ship themselves, but Nadine's suddenly like, nah man, you can take all the treasure because booby traps are stupid and gave me a boo-boo. I'm splitting ya, jerks, and just pisses off, locking Nate and Rafe together in the treasure hoard as the ship begins to burn down around them. So of course, it's time for a pirate sword fight to the death. Stop. Okay, I think it's cool that we get a dark-skinned woman leading a gang of mercenaries. I actually really like that. What I don't like is how Nadine's character is written so stupidly backwards that she'd come all this way, losing men left and right, all just to say, screw you guys, I'm going home, when her paycheck is literally right there in front of her, just so that the two white men can have a climactic sword fight. Nuh-uh. I ain't buying that crap for one second. Yeah, she should have just popped Rafe in the back the second they found the place, but logic aside, Nate obviously wins, as he always does, uh, ironically after getting lectured by Rafe about exactly that, crushing him beneath a huge pile of gold. Nate and Sam barely escape the flaming wreckage and make it back to Elena and Sully, who was here all along, by the way. He was just kind of here for the callbacks and nothing really else this game making this the first time we didn't have a shocking fake death for the guy, so I guess that's something. <sighs> well, after it's all said and done, Sam and Sully join up for a new job. Nate and Elena buy the old crummy salvaging plant he works at, and nobody for once thinks of going back to New Devon to loot the now sunken ship for near limitless wealth that only they know exists. <sighs> Oh, and get this, Nate and Elena just work on filling out permits to salvage in other places around the world where there might be valuables instead. Like, 
Like, that's their job now. Nate seriously murdered more people than H.H. Holmes could ever dream of in foreign countries, all for a quest to discover lost pirate treasure. And when he finally does, he and his wife immediately give up, go home, just like how they bickered about not doing for the entire game up to this point. Nathan Drake is suddenly concerned about breaking the law. He won't even get a permit to loot the sunken pirate treasure he found. Nope. But instead, because movie magic, this works out just fine for the couple anyway, as they're rolling in dough enough on their exotic island home years later, where their teenage daughter discovers relics of her parents' naughty past locked up in a cupboard. Wait, what? No, 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 like mementos from the other games and stuff. Whew. Yeah, you know, saying it all out loud like that makes the story sound really stupid. You think? But I say it goes to show how great voice and mocap actors like Nolan North and Emily Rose can elevate a piddly script into something emotional and enjoyable. Daddy, why are you holding a shotgun in this picture? Well, your daddy once used it to blast a couple thousand dirty foreigners' heads into puddles of Chef Boyardee. Ew! I know, I'm sorry, honey. Chef Boyardee's disgusting. Sound design is the most important aspect for immersion in a video game. It has the ability to enhance an average experience and make it feel emotional and real. And hey, I can actually tell this soundtrack apart from the other three games. Oh, so you can tell that this time instead of Greg Edmondson, we have Henry Jackson composing this. This one's got that whole slide whistly thing. <sighs> That's not a slide whistle, dummy. This is the best Uncharted game, and I don't say that lightly. I guarantee you, I could convince my parents that these are real people and not video game characters. And that's not just because they believe everything they see or hear without validating it. It's a shame Naughty Dog spent the last few years completely remaking The Last of Us, a perfectly impressive modern game already remastered for PS4, and just let this series rot with nothing but a few pity ports. It's so sad to see such talented developers waste years of their experience on a redundant masturbatory ego inflator, regardless of how much everyone protests. Also, Neil Druckmann is a pompous butt sneeze who took over writing this game after allegedly forcing the original writer, Amy Hennig, out of the office. You mean the douchebag behind this preschool example of how to destroy and grossly misrepresent your own characters in original highly praised story at the same time? Yeah, the guy with his head so far up his own butt he doesn't need routine colonoscopies to check for cancer. You mean the guy who basically is cancer? Neil Druckmann is cancer. Now let's rate a game he wrote regardless of how I feel about that insufferable self-righteous man-child. The positive gamer in me was amazed with Uncharted 4 A Thief's End, giving it a golden 10 out of 10. This game is one of the most technically and graphically marvelous achievements in the medium. And unfortunately, it's actually a really great ending for Nathan Drake. The critical gamer in me, uh, after much deliberation, has to give Uncharted 4 A Thief's End a 9 out of 10. Yeah, I heavily implied that last time I would be giving this a double 10, and it really is incredible, but I'm just so hung up on a few dumb story oversights that unfortunately pulled down the final product for me. It does at least tie with the quality you expect from Uncharted 2 and 3. But what do you think? Tell us how- <laughs> Treasure! Um, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, positive critical mumbo jumbo. Just gotta smack the keyboard, make some numbers happen on screen, I guess, but uh, but, but, but if you... <gasps> Next episode, go, go, go on, get out of here! You're just playing with yourself! Yada, 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 now give me that box! <laughs> and thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more, and use the links in the description to nominate your own episode. And thank you to all of our Patreon members, Aspen, Atomic Thomas, Arrow, and Sid. <sighs> See ya!